As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right. Over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about wigs. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. HD Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. The fundamental importance of portfolio diversification is to minimize risk related to investments. However, you must also know that over diversification can reduce portfolio's return without meaningfully reducing its risks. Hello everyone, I'm Navneet Dubey from Mint's personal finance team. Today's topic of why not Mint Money podcast is why diversification is needed for a balanced portfolio for HNIs. Before that, I would like to tell you that in our today's episode, we have invited Anu Bansal. He is the chief business officer at Scriptbox. Hi. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started on your money journey. Hi Anu, welcome to the episode. Hi Navneet, thanks for having me on this episode. So my first question is, why is diversification needed for a balanced portfolio for HNIs? Yeah, so actually... Uh... Your question is that we need to have a balanced portfolio. So when you want to have a balanced portfolio, you want to make sure that uh, you do not take excessive risk and uh, you diversify into various asset classes and uh, various products in order to make sure that uh, you your risk profile and the return profile are matched. Okay. So if you let's say if you take uh, if you do not take uh, um, ideal combination of asset classes then your risk may be much higher or your volatility may be higher so then your portfolio is not balanced similarly if you have uh, uh, if you have less number of products or let's say you have only one stock in a particular asset class or uh, five stocks then you may not have uh, uh, again, you you are taking too much risk. So what happens is that if you do not diversify enough, then uh, you are taking too much risk on a on an asset class, uh, and uh, uh, a product or multiple products, uh, which uh, necessarily leads to more risk on your portfolio. So that's why diversification is needed for a balanced portfolio. Okay. So like, what significant investment avenues are available for HNIs, and do uh, they invest in traditional insurance plans? Yes. Uh, See, traditional insurance plan they can uh, they can invest as long as uh, depending upon their need. So, insurance is basically risk cover, right? So, yes. generally, insurance uh, should not be looked at uh, as an investment product. And if uh, their uh, risk cover is is uh, is adequately covered with the uh, existing assets, then they may not even need insurance cover, right? So. Insurance cover is only in case something happens to them uh, for their for the survivors, and uh, not looking at it as an investment product. Uh, it all depends upon their need, right? So, just as an example, if the insurance cover required for the survivors is uh, ten crores, and okay. they already have assets more than ten crores, so I'm talking about HNIs, then they don't need an insurance cover. Uh, but and for investment purposes, like for tax saving and all, yeah. So now recently, the the tax, some of the the tax uh, budget in uh, for uh, which uh, the recent proposal for the budget, uh, they are uh, kind of limiting the tax benefit for insurance, right? So yes. what happens is that uh, those uh, benefits would be limited. So from that perspective, the attractiveness of uh, insurance as an investment product. 
uh, would be limited and okay. uh, it would be better to kind of invest in uh, other products and to answer your question about other products uh, so typically all the mutual funds stocks uh, all your regular products are definitely available for hni but they can also look at some of the aifs because they are higher limits so for example aifs would have a minimum investment of 1 cr tms is because they have a, a minimum uh, investment of 50 lakhs so some of those uh, investments can also be looked at uh, by hni because of the characteristics or the minimum investment limit and then uh, so the startup investments if they are looking at depending upon their corpus of course it all depends upon that they should not put all their eggs in one basket depending depending upon the corpus size they can look at some of those other investments okay so uh, i would like to understand like like then what is over diversification see over diversification so typically from uh, from the theory or from the uh, the math mathematical point of view if you diversify to make sure that your risk re- uh, reduces so let's say i have one product and i diversify to include another product or another asset class now there is a correlation between these two products or two asset classes and typically the correlation if it is low then what happens is that uh, the market movement or uh, any event movement or anything like that will not impact both the products or the asset classes in the same manner and low correlation correlation means that they will be impacted differently and so one moves up significantly the other may not move at all and the one goes down significantly the other other may not go down at all right so overall your portfolio benefits because now your portfolio volatility reduces now the mathematically as you keep adding the okay benefits of this diversification reduce after a certain number and after a certain number of products and the asset classes if the correlation is high it doesn't matter you can have add as many asset classes and if they are correlated you are not really diversifying because they won't will move in the same direction whether it's going up or going down right so over diversification is where you have more asset classes which are highly correlated or you have too many products which ultimately Uh, reduce the benefit of diversification so that's what uh, investor should uh, should be careful about uh, so so is over diversification advisable to anyone like including hnis no definitely not uh, over diversification but yes if you are under diversified then it is better to be over diversified than under diversified right so what okay. would happen is over diversification may not lead to uh, may may suppress your returns so over diversification will not increase risk but it may suppress your returns however under diversification will increase your uh, risk in the portfolio okay so as you said like over diversification will not increase your risk then like what should hnis do to ensure their asset allocation is efficient and there is no risk of uh, like over concentration over diversification yeah so essentially uh, they should choose asset classes which are uh, uh, not highly correlated so, and there are formulas for that uh, how to choose asset classes which are not highly correlated and uh, once they have these uh, asset classes chosen uh, they should probably under each asset class choose uh, uh, an ideal number of products so for example in mutual funds there are different uh, uh, sub asset classes are there so like large cap mid cap small cap uh, so what they could do is they could choose two to three funds in each uh, sub asset class uh, in order to make sure that they are not over diversifying two to three funds uh, and uh, sometimes these number of funds can go up a little bit because of the uh, the quantum of investment that is included and uh, essentially there are some there's a kind of a science and uh, research behind it so it's best to also contact an advisor to get those inputs yeah. in terms of how many asset classes and determine their risk profile also so investments have to be uh, as per their risk profile okay so like what's the role of advisor in this case so the advisor what the advisor would do is the advisor would help them understand their risk profile and okay. create an asset allocation model and then once that is done the advisor also uh, would help uh clients understand or investors understand the historical risk return characteristics 
of these asset classes so so will not advisor take care of all this diversification is some if an hni is going through uh, you know a planner's route yeah absolutely they will do that right definitely so my point over here is that uh, uh, if hni is do not have an advisor then they have to okay. think through all these things all these aspects in order to create a portfolio okay if they are directly investing through certain portals and all right yeah so so they shouldn't be investing just uh, see typically in hni's case in my experience what i've seen is because they have amounts to invest uh, yeah. the tendency is for them to invest in as many products as possible thinking that they will uh, tend to get the best of uh, everything and uh, to capture all the product and uh, they have the amount to be invested but then what tends to happen is that uh, many of these products get are correlated with each other so much uh, the the aspect is that uh, they tend to diversify over diversify too much and uh, the amounts get distributed too much in their in in that sense so returns get really uh, depressed in such a case because you do not have an ideal combination and your asset allocation can really get out of whack because uh, uh, you may tend to invest too much in debt because there are too many products available in debt or you may have invested too much in equity because there are too many products available in equity so when this product led approach and uh, choosing every product that may be available on the market then that uh, tends to or leads to uh, not an ideal asset allocation combination okay so so my last question is like as per the current budget will uh, hni be impacted as the government has restricted the tax exemption limit on the premium amount what's your take on it yeah so if they were uh, using uh, insurance as uh, uh, as a, a tax saving uh, a uh, mechanism then that definitely would be a, there would be an impact because as of the uh, recent is like the as per the recent um, report like around 10% of uh, hris were into the segment who are investing in insurance policies yes so definitely uh, they would uh, t- they would have to kind of fork out uh, more tax if they are investing in the in the insurance products because of beyond 5 lakhs there's a limit that has been put this uh, this budget onwards uh so my advice again is uh, don't look at insurance as a as an investment product and for these uh, 10% uh, hnis we have been looking at it probably they may be better off uh, looking at other asset classes or uh, other products like uh, and just invest in mutual funds or uh, equity for example equity has uh, has a very favorable tax treatment right 10% 15% and so that's uh, that they may be better off doing that so just want just wanted to understand one thing like you said earlier uh, like for hnis if they have so much of asset there there is no need to you know invest in insurance plans as you said earlier so were uh, this 10% segment uh, were like uh, misguided or or what from the insurance agent side i mean why they are yeah, investing so, in insurance so, plans then typically uh insurance see what tends to happen when with insurance products is that uh, uh these insurance products generally give you like 5 to 6% of return not more than that correct so that two two things which are sold in these insurance products one is the tax exempt status which uh, will now go away uh, with the recent uh, budget uh, uh, announcements second thing is uh, also this whole thing about that uh, you are getting an insurance yes. uh, along with the investment product now think which, about which, it which may not be required as such right which is not required right so what people forget is that uh, there's a cost associated with providing insurance which is called as mortality charges okay. now those mortality charges are taken away from your premium only yes that's why those uh, those rates or those uh, returns are lower because if you, you are paying a premium part of it goes towards your mortality charges for underwriting that uh, risk cover and uh, part of it is invested for you to kind of uh, get that return that you're getting right so and this is charge which you are paying which you really don't need because it is a probability right it is not a right. 
it's an event for your risk cover so if you already have assets uh, backing that uh, risk why would you need to kind of uh, have anything anything else to kind of cover that risk so, so my how, my question was like uh, was there any miss selling involved earlier definitely insurance has been one of the uh, most missold products right uh, in the industry so yes uh, insurance miss selling happens all the time i cannot comment on uh, who's doing it how how yeah. they're doing it but definitely that's a well known industry fact that the insurance is missold okay 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 thank you so much anu for your valuable inputs thank you thanks navneet thanks for having me on the on this podcast that brings us to the end of our episode if you would like to know more or make suggestions of a personal finance topic that you want us to cover you can reach out to me on twitter at amnavneet dubey thank you for tuning in see you in the next episode this was a mint production brought to you by hd smartcast hd smartcast